Hello and welcome to Easter Hack 21. It's 2024, just to confuse you. Uh, this is Regensburg. Um, this is day one of Easter Hack 21. Um, we are going to talk about flight. I mean, flight, we all know we shouldn't fly because it's bad for the environment, it's bad for the planet. But flying is fun, so there are alternatives to flying in real life or in physical space. Um, you can fly in a simulation. There are flight simulators out there. There are flight simulators from commercial vendors um, who take a lot of money and a lot of your bandwidth to update your sceneries. And it's uh, not the best option, maybe. So there are, there are other options. There are open source options. One of the options is flight gear. So in this talk, um, Nia is going to talk about what flight gear is, sceneries, how it came together, what her role in that whole thing maybe is, and also um, what fun you can have with some physical um, additional tools to that flight simulator and how that might improve the experience. So please welcome with a very warm applause, Nia. Thanks for the introduction. I'm Nia, I'm in the Flight Geek community since 2017, and in that time I've made one of the biggest scenery projects. Uh, we will hear about this later. What is Flight Gear? Flight Gear is an open source flight simulator built by an enthusiastic community from around the globe. It's not only just a toy or a game, it's also used, for example, in simulators approved by the FAA, the Federal Aviation Authority in the US. So if you train there for your private pilot license, for example, you may be using flight gear for that. Also, another museum, the Bronco Museum in the USA, uses flight gear as a demonstration. And the Red Bull Air Racing team, if you know that, uh, did use flight gear in the past to simulate their race courses before they built them in real life and try to fly them in real life. Let's take a first uh, look at the history where flight gear is coming from. Flight gear is older than I am. Flight gear started in 1996 uh, with the like common route, which is still shared um, till this day using OpenGL starting in 1997. In the beginning, it used NASA's LRC SIM FDM, which was the default uh, till 2000. The FDM is the flight dynamic model, so it describes how the model actually flies. The aircraft you see on the screen is just for aesthetics, doesn't matter um, if it's a brick or um, a paper airplane. The FDM is how the plane actually flies. Another project which um, is closely related to flight gear is JSB SIM, which is another F FDM, which is also in development since 1996. And it's also not just used by flight gear, but also like by NASA and some universities for flight dynamic modeling. On the screen, you can see one of the um, last or the, the earliest surviving uh, screenshots of flight gear. And to the left, the logo flight gear used to have on Windows 95. About 10 years later, in December 20, uh, 2007, the first uh, the version 1.0 as the first stable release came out. And a few months later, also a matching scenery version of a worldwide scenery. You can see a screenshot of that up on the screen. In 2008, we started to migrate from, away from PLA, which was used for scenery rendering back then, to OSG. We still use parts of PLA. We will hear about that again later. In 2010, version 2.0 was released, 
with OpenSCENE Graph being major, one of the highlights uh, of this new uh, version included new 3D clouds, uh, vastly improved lighting conditions, improved support for custom scenery, and many, many new detailed aircraft models. In 2013, a new world scenery uh, 2.0 was released. Since 2016, FlightGear uses a different versioning scheme, starting with the year of the major release. Um, so right now we're still at the 2020.3 um, major release since uh, in the meantime there wasn't a one. With that also default A ports uh, were selected for um, the releases. Um, this is now my first big project in flight gear. After one and a half years of work, I finally been able to release the uh, Open OSM2 City World Build. OSM2 City is a program which takes data from OpenStreetMap and uh, creates flight gear scenery out of it. You can see a screenshot of Madrid in this uh, view um, where the most generic buildings are all coming from OpenStreetMap. And if I was a few months faster or uh, Microsoft was a few months slower with their um, Flight Simulator 2020, Flight Gear would actually have been the um, first flight simulator with global OpenStreetMap-based scenery. Also, if you uh, contributed to OpenStreetMap before, you contributed to Flight Gear. Thank you very much. Uh, in 2022, I uh, released a refresh, which also now included trees which got mapped by mappers in OpenStreetMap. That's the history so far. So where will the future take us? First of all, um, we're working on a new world scenery, 3.0. You can see a um, screenshot of a test version. It's a bit older now and has a few glitches, but um, it's coming together nicely and it's one of the big things currently being worked on. Another big thing, um, yes, it's better to see on the beamer. Um, another big thing um, is uh, with the new scenery is, for example, night lighting, as you can see in this image. The street lights are all there. Also, another benefit is autographic scenery, so like satellite images or um, aerial footage of uh, aerial surveys can now easily be uh, incorporated into the scenery without having memory issues, as with the currently uh, used scenery, you run out of memory, even if you have like 32 gigs and 16 gigs VRAM. And the Last big thing we're currently working on is a new HDR pipeline, um, which also is um, accompanied by the move from the OpenGL compatibility profile to the OpenGL core profile. Um, here, one of the stones to uh, get out of the way is the removal of PLIP. Yes, it wasn't used for rendering the scenery for a long time, but it still had its place for rendering menus and so on. So we have to get this out and replaced before we can fully move to core profile. And eventually, if uh, the manpower allows it, um, we may also change to Vulkan, but that's to be seen, because it's also a lot of work. and. Like, those are just a bunch of struggles. Also, like, the new scenery is more detailed, which means uh, it takes up more storage, which will cause uh, more stress on the mirrors, which are currently all run by volunteers. Um, and also, all the work is, like, limited by volunteer time, as we all do it just in our free time. 
Uh, I know a few people, including myself, who would love to work on Flight Gear as a job, but none of us have found a way to practically do this. If you know a way to get a job working on Flight Gear, please let me know. So now that we know what Flight Gear is and uh, where it's headed, how do you uh, get started yourself if you want to try it out? On Linux, just check your package manager. It's mostly available on the common distros. For macOS and Windows, you can go to flightgear.org slash download. There are also app images for Linux distros who, which don't package Flight Gear. The alternative, which I will not go in here, um, it will be building from source. Um, right. So I've got a short um, demo video for you um, showing how you get started with flying in flight gear.
Now we know the basic controls, so let's take this plane flying. Set the mouse mode to flight controls, release the parking brake and press page up to increase the throttle. The plane has a tendency to move left, so use the right rudder using the enter key to counteract. At the speed of about 60 knots, gently pull the cursor down to take off. Congratulations, you're flying! From here on the sky is the limit, have fun! Well, that was a simple demo. Obviously, if you have a, a yoke or a joystick, it's highly recommended to use this instead of uh, the mouse. But to just get started, the cursor is enough. So before we get into how to hack our own hardware, we got to understand a bit about the simulator, how it's built up. The code is made out of three main repositories. Zimgear, it's a library for uh, scenery um, related things. Canvas, which is like the drawing library for dialogues, the new ones, and uh, also aircraft displays and like glass cockpits and Airbus and such. Flightgear is the main simulator code base. And then there's FGData, which contains basic assets, things such as shaders, textures, and also protocol files, which we will hear in a second. A few more noteworthy uh, repositories are FG add-on, which contain the aircraft you've seen you can download in the launcher. FG meter contains build scripts for you to easily build flight gear on your Linux from source, for example. An open scene graph, as we heard, is a dependency for drawing the scenery and for some things if you want to hack on that it's good to know where to find things. So when we want to interface with flight gear we need to know where the data is. Flight gear stores most of its data at runtime in a property tree which as the name suggests is a tree-like structure containing different properties. For example for the FDM whether position and velocities view your aircraft you're interested in. Um, if you need like custom things, you can also write those from your scripts or definitions to the property tree and much more. You can expect the, uh, inspect these via the uh, property tree browser in the simulator pressing the forward slash um, keyboard shortcut or inspected via the web interface. Uh, so if you want to like link something on your hardware, for example, and need to know which property it is, you would search in the property tree for that. Or the other way around, you look at the aircraft you're interested in and see where the control is coming from. So how do we access the data? Yes, Telnet is still an option. Um, but we don't talk about this here. Um, there are user-defined protocols for network and also the Siri console, where you define, uh, for example, a comma-separated list of values, um, which are just get read from a network port or a serial port, which makes it rather easy to code for it, as you can just net cut uh, values to this port and are up and running. Then, of course, USB is another option, but a bit more uh, intricate to implement if you're creating your own hardware, as you need to write the USB uh, human interface device firmware for it. The last option to interface with the property tree is via HTTP and WebSockets, where you can uh, open up a web um, an HTTP port on the simulator and access the f um, property tree and 
manipulate it via that. So if you need uh, help along the way, there are a few ways to get that. On the forum, there's more the uh, scenery people and aircraft developers. There's a mailing list, which is uh, mainly used by the core developers who developed the uh, um, main simulator. There's still an IRC around, and we try to get people to chat more on Matrix. Let's talk about my own PCB design. I started out this year um, with the desire to built my own first PCB. I had absolutely zero experience. Um, and I l had to learn the very basics. Um, I started out with a simple idea. I wanted to build a very simple panel resembling of the A320. It controls the lighting of some elements in the cockpit. So with that said, uh, I also wanted it to be very plug and play. So anything where I have to like add protocol files, especially if you consider it having it compatible with other simulators, which interface differently, makes something like a serial console rather um, tricky. Which is why I decided on using the USB HID human interface device um, connection for it. And I also went full out and designed this around an STM32 chip instead of using a dev board or something, cause I don't know, I was motivated. So um, you see on the screen the uh, schematic of my PCB and on the bottom right a um, layout of the PCB showing two potentiometers for the uh, brightness controls as well as the STM32 and all the things which needs to support it. Additionally, I also have integrated lighting, uh, which uh, gives a nice feedback loop. Uh, building this, I faced a few issues because, well, I'm new to this. and. I forgot a bunch of things, overlooked things, needed a lot of um, hardware hackery to even get it to the point how I'm about to present it to you in a few minutes. And well, the biggest obstacle right now to me is actually the firmware. Uh, I, uh, while I was waiting for the PCB to arrive, I tested some things out with an ESP32 I had lying around it can't do uh, USB HID, but uh, it could do serial, so I tried that. And that was also rather quick to implement on uh, my PCB once it arrived, and I assembled it and debugged all the hardware issues. But getting it to work on like the HID protocol, I'm still working on that, and it probably will still be a journey till I have the um, the PCB in the shape I want it to, but like eventually, in my mind, I want to build more of an A320 cockpit because uh, I do enjoy um, doing this. Yes. So let's show you how this PCB works. I hope it's visible on screen. Yes, so as you can see, um, I can control with my own PCB uh, on the knob the brightness of the integrated lighting. Right now, as you can also see, the knob isn't really calibrated, so um, I have dead zones at both ends and it's also flickering because I have an integer overflow somewhere in my code. And the LEDs aren't actually um, on the PCB aren't actually controlled via the simulator yet. So uh, those could be on while the simulator says, no, those parts don't even have electricity because nothing is running. Um, that's also still a thing I need to implement. So 
Finally, I want to look at some projects um, from the community um, around flight gear. First of all, this is a project from 2008, before like widescreen displays were common. Uh, flight gear has a neat way to set up different views for uh, different uh, monitors and so on. So this is actually run off of one single computer with four uh, Fire GL 5600 GPUs. And that was back in 20, uh, uh, 2008 by Matthew Tippett. Um, then the next project I want to show you is one which is currently active by Matthias Sayer. Um, he uses a Raspberry Pi Pico and started using um, 3D printer parts to build uh, altimeter vertical speed indicator and compass, uh, as you can see here. To complete six pack, he's currently working on the artificial horizon. Um, I haven't seen an update in the last few days, but that's how the state is. And Actually, people on the forum asked if he would sell this. But unfortunately, as it is right now, selling something like this in low volume is just not feasible, even if people would like to offer um, uh, something for those who can't just build electronic things themselves. Then there's probably my favorite uh, project of them all. Um, this one is from 2010 by uh, Jenna and Wayne. They built a collimated mirror. So what is that? When you are on a big screen like this and look straight down the runway, but you have a co-pilot who sits like three meters to the side, he doesn't look straight down the runway anymore. A collimated mirror solves this problem by uh, some uh, intricate uh, optics and mirrors. So on the top left, you see the, um, the uh, spider, how it's called, where the beamers are mounted. The projection screen is actually missing in this picture. And on the right image, you see the um, the mirror, how it's uh, in its proper shape. It's so wrinkly in the left picture because uh, to have the proper shape, you can't just uh, tape some reflected, uh, f reflective uh, material to the to some wood or something because you wouldn't really get a mirror. How they've done it and how it's also done in the expensive professional um, simulators where airline pilots train um, is using vacuum uh, with a regulator which pulls the uh, thin material in the desired shape. Right, um, I'm actually way too fast, I am <laughs> realizing. So um, I'm actually already through I don't know. <laughs> I didn't expect to be this fast. But um, thanks for listening. And well, if you have questions later on, you can find me here. Thank you. And as you noticed, we have time for question and answers. <laughs> so if you have a question, please raise uh, one of your tentacles, arms, hands, make yourself noticeable, and we'll come to you with a microphone so we get the question for the screen. Any questions? Don't be shy. We have time. German questions as well? Yes. If in doubt. Hey, was it good? F uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if so, if I would this, uh, so if I would decide to, mm. 
Oh, good question. Um, I would say it depends on the plane or aircraft in general. Like if you fly like a, a gentle aircraft, especially like something uh, like an A320, it's actually rather stable because um, it got all the control um, systems simulated. So you have fly-by-wire, which holds the aircraft steady for you. Um, I would say if you really like do it once an evening for a week or two, you could land it. It may not be the perfect landing, but like um, no more crashing. Uh, but like if you go into like more intricate uh, propeller aircraft uh, where you got forces like the P factor to account for, um, which is uh, also what you've seen in the demo, which turns the uh, aircraft to the left, that's the P factor, um, then it takes a bit more time and helicopter. I wouldn't recommend you trying that without actually having a stick and rudder pedals. And for that, you probably need a few months um, before you can land that. So yes, also flight gear has a space shuttle, but that's more like a, a topic of reading the documentation because you need the do NASA documentation to fly it. <laughs> and it flies like a brick. Yes, <laughs> it's a brick shuttle. Further questions? Over there? Come on. Don't be shy. I, I saw a second hand before. And we're working on the light, so hopefully the next, the next talk the, the slides will be better visible. There's too much light at the, at the lower half, so... But it's, it's good in the, scre in the stre stream, so if you, if, you, if you want to see the, the whole picture, watch the stream afterwards again. It's all there. Further questions? Last chance, yes. Wait, 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 wait. We want it for the stream. <laughs> um, what programming languages are used? Um, Flight Gear itself is written in C++. And uh, the flight dynamics models are defined in XML. And Flight Gear itself uses a scripting language called Nasal, uh, which is used in a lot of add-ons, scripting, the aircraft systems, and so on. Um, yes. Further questions? Keep them coming. It's a, it's a, it's a broad topic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How big is the user community and the developer community around the flight sim? Um, the user community, um, that's a tough question. L looking at the download uh, for the release builds, it's a few thousand a month. So um, actually not insignificant. Developers, um, Again, it depends on the topic. Um, core developers, maybe 10 or so, who actually work on core code like shaders and the simulator code and so on. But there are a lot of developers around aircraft who like either focus on like a more broad range of aircraft they're developing on or people go into very detail like with the A320 or the MD-11 modeling every single detail of it and that takes years and so um, there are a lot of people involved into aircraft development and of course there's also scenery development and so on. Um, I can give you a precise number for that um, but yeah probably at least a few dozen um, in those areas. Uh, how do they get all that information to model all the details? Is that publicly available or do they just go on flights and take photos of everything or something? <laughs> uh, good question and it really depends. Like uh, I've heard a story of some developer um, of a small Italian aircraft, uh, single seat sport aircraft if I remember correctly, 
and he contacted the company and they were actually kind enough to invite him and show him the factory and so on. Um, and for some aircraft, there are also like spec sheets available, while for other aircraft, it's really just digging the internet or like going to places, take photos, model it after that. Um, that's like for the modeling and then also like for the flight dynamics model. For some aircraft, there are actually wind tunnel um, information available, which is like the best case because you can, can like really precisely um, tune your flight dynamics model to follow what the wind tunnel data says. Um, other sources is of course like um, also anecdotal um, things like for example with the A320 the landing lights fold out of the wings increasing the drag and um, according to pilots who fly this aircraft the sink rate increases by about 200 uh, feet per minute if you do that so the person who developed the A320 flight dynamics model actually went in and replicated this by tuning the flight dynamics model to um, match those reports. And yeah, it's just depends on which data is available, if it's uh, uh, actually available or if it's um, hard to find for, I guess, military aircraft or also like newer Airbus aircraft like A350 you barely find any manuals about aircraft, uh, cockpit systems, for example. What about, what about Boeing? Can you, uh, can you simulate a Boeing without a door? <laughs> um, well, as far as I know, they don't have this exact damage model. Um, maybe I should ask the developers for that. Um, but yes, you could obviously... Um, make it lose doors, um, or crash, or lose tires, um, whatever you like of the oh, Boeing oh, feature oh, set. Whatever happens next week, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Other questions? As you can see, you can ask any question. Even... <laughs> you, you will be around, right? Yes, I will be around. Send her off with a very warm round of applause. Yeah.